Yes. Okay. Let's go there now. Looks like ancient Egypt. Yeah. One woman. I'm carrying something in my hands. Like I'm at the market mm -hmm. carrying something back home. Oh, my husband's sick. He's a very... Very deep love. Very, that fairy tale love. That he's dying. And I'm just trying to do what I can. Ignoring. It's like I'm shoving the heartbreak down. Oh, I'm trying to be there. Be practical or whatever. Like trying to do with her. There's mm -hmm. herbs and tinctures and stuff. I'm trying to help him. It's like I'm a medicine woman. I, not needing help from anyone else. It's like I know what I should be doing, what I need to do, but just really not going to take care of it. He's, he's going to die. And I know that, and I'm putting on this facade <laughs> for him mm -hmm. to help him through the last days. There's just this heartbreak like underneath that. Do they want to take you back to the courting day so you can see the courting or is that in material to this? Yeah, that's really nice. Doesn't feel like a facade? No. How can you tell the difference? I don't know. <laughs> All right. So no. what I want you what I want you to do is to feel in your body. You yeah. can feel in your body where the true feelings behind the courtship lie. Yeah. Where is it in your body? Oh, it's down in the pelvis, like in the reproductive organs and low back, second chakra. I want you to lock that feeling in now. It's just really clear. Grounded, solid. No chaos, no distractions. Even the laughter is grounded. Yeah, they're showing, they're letting me feel the difference between the other lifetimes and this one. Perfect. No, it's like a, you know, lifetimes had like a high face in front of the face direction energy. And all that, there's no, there's nothing in front of the face in this lifetime. It's just grounded, mm -hmm. solid and through the hips, really rooted. Okay. All right. So I want you to lock in that feeling. And from this moment forward, you will be able to tell by paying attention to your body. The feelings within your body will indicate to you whether somebody that you are dating has the feelings that you require. Okay. So you'll be looking for that feeling from the pelvis in the future. And that is how you will be able to tell. Trusting the wisdom of your body. Is that clear to you? Yes, that's clear. Okay. And is there anything else that we need to see from this lifetime? Anything else that's important for your healing here today? No. No? Okay, so let's go to the last day of this lifetime. <sighs> Get ready to cross yourself over. Yeah. Okay, and I want you to follow the white light as it leaves your body. And I want you to let me know if we have any beliefs that we need to reframe or release. No. No? Okay. It feels like she understood and accepted it. Okay, perfect. Float away. We are looking. That was definitive, but we've got 20% somewhere. There is a lifetime worth 20% of your relationship pain that needs to come forward today, and you're avoiding it. So let's go. Oh, okay. Let's go there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's find it. I think you'll have to go. 
I'm on a farm. That's where we started actually with the wind chime. I hung it on this tree and it's at this farm and it's if is this not right? eighteen hundreds. Eighteen hundreds. Not a very large family, a lot of kids. Who are you? Are you my I'm mother? Favorite. I'm the mother. Just, I don't want to be there. Oh. I mean, I love the children, but I don't want to be there. Why don't you want to be there? I just feel like it's a miserable existence. Why? I mean, it's got to do with the husband. Mm -hmm. Find him so that you can zoom into him because often when we find the husband, we find the energy which helps us unlock the why. hearing the words like he's a brute I just I didn't really have a choice in getting married are we in America yeah. and my parents more or less sold me off and he there's no love at all it's just functional but he's so kind of like a... farmer wants a wife yeah but he's like verbally abusive he oh he really hates me yeah that's it okay why does he hate you just never living up to his standards of what he wanted in a, in a slave essentially never doing anything up to him his standards. Okay. The kids seem to be, they're just, they're there, but whatever. Mm. They don't part of it. And do you stay in the marriage? Uh-huh. Yeah, with the kids. Yeah. Is there any other scene that we need to see that's pivotal in this lifetime? No, oh, I think he kills me. Accidentally. How does somebody kill somebody accidentally? It's like he slaps me and I fall and hit my head. And how old were you at the time that you died? Oh, for the age I'm at right now, 45. Okay. So seeing as we've just without realizing it, being taken to the death scene. Float up high above your body. And let's get the perspective on this lifetime, please. What does your high self wish you to know about this lifetime? I don't know. This doesn't seem like the right lifetime. What do you mean? Like it's not the 20% lifetime. No, I don't think it is either. But we can go to that. We just want to quickly see if there's anything that we need to release. No point doing the lifetime if we don't release anything that needs to be released. Just... It's almost like how my soul handled having absolutely no control over anything. In this case, pretty stoic, actually. Numbing myself out. Ooh, okay, but that's not good, is it? Does your soul wish you to release the need to numb yourself? What is it about numbing that your soul needed to know? It's Do part you... of, yeah, it's important because it's it's part of what I'm feeling right now. It's like all the feelings I keep having, they're 
the lifetimes are touching on them, the melancholy, the deep pain. It's all, and this is like another layer of it. It's a numbing, numbing out. And is your soul trying to tell you not to use these techniques, or just that these are uh, techniques of avoidance, or these are these? Is it your soul wishing to reframe to show you these were coping skills? Like, how does it want you to view these emotions that we've just? They want me to stop using them. Okay. Coping skills. Okay. Stop using emotions as coping skills. These are you essential ones? Are you stuffing? Basically, you're stuffing them down into your body, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we might request some healing after, but right now we, you, I want you to go to that point where you said to me, "No, this is not the right, right lifetime," and follow that feeling. Okay. So just go. Okay. I'm laying down on the grass. I'm in Scotland. It is the 1500s. <laughs> Why are you sighing? <laughs> Am I not there? No, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Who are you? Male, female? Female again. Just... <sighs> Say it as you see it. This is it. This is it. This is... This is a big one, isn't it? Yeah, he's just... I'm like, why the F am I out in the middle? No. Have it, this man is on top of me having sex with me. I'm trying to figure out if I'm being raped or not. No. He's just having probably, a fling with you? Probably to a degree, but I'm, this is, this sucks, is what I feel. What's your name? Why am I in this, like, field? Sue, Suzanne. Susanna. Susanna. And this. Okay, this is it. This guy is, we're married, and I just don't have no interest in this person at all. I just got married out of, I would say, panic almost, like, mm -hmm. to save my life, to have, to not be a vagabond, to not be homeless. And why were you in a position where you needed, what were you running from? I was like, my family, my parents died. I'm like, maybe 16. Okay. My parents died, some kind of illness. I don't have any siblings. So then I was like, it's like they're showing this rapid, like any place, the place we lived, was taken by the authorities or whatever. Mm -hmm. I just basically was put out on the street. This man found me. He's like 20 years older than I am. And could tell I was desperate and wanted a wife. Wanted someone to have sex with all the mm -hmm. time. And so I just thought this would be better than being alone. better than what the alternative would be, which would be actually like in a brothel. At least it's the same person. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I just feel like it's like pressure in my heart, this like trapped, just mm -hmm. awful trapped feeling. Of, I don't know where to go. This is it. He's not, he's gross. He's not particular. he's not like cruel though. Why is he gross? Is he fat or ugly? Yeah, or? Fat, ugly, fat, old, gross. Wants to have sex all the time. And 
And is he like just average person wealth wise? Or he's somebody in society like He's not No, he's not somebody in society. Mm -hmm. But they're using the word like a merchant, like he has a small mm. business or something. And do you have children to him? Eventually, two. Mm -hmm. Two children? Okay. That's joyful. I keep feeling like it's enough. And given he's older than you, does he stay alive for a while? Mm. Yeah. The kids are gone. They're old enough to leave by the time he gets, by the time he dies. And are you okay when he... Are you not my put kid. back in the same situation as you were no, when your parents died? Is, one of my kids has married off, married up somehow, and they, they're taking care of me. I just feel this gross, yuck feeling in my body. And how old are you when he dies? I'm gonna say like 35. Okay, so you're still, in modern standards, you're young, but at those mm -hmm. times, perhaps not. So as a 35 year old, uh, do you remarry or are you put out to pasture, so to speak, because you're at that time I considered just, old? No, I just live at this house with my daughter and her husband. I just take care of me. I sit, a lot the, sit on the front porch a lot. <laughs> okay. I'm just biding my time. Again, not interested in getting, I don't want to get married. I don't want to deal with that again. Okay. All right. Have we skipped over any pivotal scenes that we need to visit for your emotional health's sake? Is there anything we need to go forward to or back to, to release? Mm -mm, no. No. Is there anything we need to, anything else in this lifetime or are you ready to float up above your body in the last day of your life. I can go the last day I'm just in this bed, in this house. My daughter's there and I'm just old, dying of old age. Alright, so I want you to float up above your body. Now, I want you to let me know, are there any limiting beliefs? Or vows made in this lifetime that need releasing. Yeah, um, it, it's like being in poverty. I would do anything to just not be. It's just to feel safe and to have like my needs met financially and. To not be homeless, to have enough food and, a sh and shelter and clothing and stuff like that. Okay, so what would your higher self, otherwise adult, like to do to reframe or to show you the truth of this situation? How would they like to correct your beliefs? They're showing me his view of me, which mm -hmm. was that he really cared about me. Okay. And really wanted to take care of me. Would never have understood, like, that that age that I felt that was just, like, he was disgusting. And he just really, like, his heart was really pure. Okay. 
And did he know and understand that you felt disgusted by him? No. Okay. So his love for you created a protective layer so that he couldn't realize that? Yeah. Okay. So I want you to look into his eyes and feel the love that he had for you. That's really sweet and kind. I feel in this angle just very lucky to have had that kind of stability and safety and kindness. Mm -hmm in that lifetime. That protection kept me safer than I would have been otherwise. Allow me to have two children, a love of children. Allowed me to even then live out the life, the rest of my life in peace. After that traumatizing experience with my parents dying, I think that's actually important. That experience. Like we're focusing on the relationship, but the actual the death of my parents in that lifetime feels really significant. Okay. Do we need to go back to that scene to release something from there? Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to that scene now so that we can see what we need to know, understand and release. It's just the idea that it's like the main two people that I had known my whole life gone and then I was still able to take care of myself anyway. That's basically the gist of it. Okay. Maybe I don't have to go back to the scene so much as just understand that connection. Yeah. Okay. So what we've done here, we've got some really important reframes. One of the things that we want to observe from a higher level, from an eagle's perspective, is that the mind can be a friend and a foe, right? And so you have a pattern of observing relationships from the ground level rather than the eagle view and at the ground view your mind casts them as negative disgusting gross boring numbing or whatever sure you've had the ones that were abusive but generally your mind goes to the negative and doesn't seem the lo love that these people have for you doesn't see the protection doesn't see the safe house doesn't see the stability that your soul craves okay so what we're wanting to do now is to reframe that and ask your mind to behave in a fashion whereby it is your best friend. <coughs> and from this point forward that you will see the truth of people's true feelings for you and that you will understand where people are meant to be in your life, a guide, a protector, a savior, and you will not seek a different role for them to what their true purpose is. You will allow the saviors to come in if you need a savior. You will allow the protectors to come in and protect you if you need a protector. You'll need, if you have friends, family, or lovers who come in to provide you with financial stability, you will accept that without rebelling against it. Mm -hmm. And you would acknowledge them for the role that they have come to help your soul with, without feeling grossed out, turned off, or uh, frustration and hatred because they don't fit this other need that you have okay because we've seen a pattern of your soul needing stability your soul needing and craving comfort and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that we would like to thank your higher self for showing us the reframes for showing us all the people that you have loved or been in relationships with where their hearts were pure sweet and kind across all lifetimes where people have showed you financial stability and safe houses for you. Is that lifetime now allowed to release the last 20% or is there anything else we need to know? No, that's good. It does it. Okay. I'll say it on your behalf. 
I release the last 20% of any outdated vows or mental, emotional or spiritual bonds that were blocking my soul's path towards true love. Now you can release that into the white light. So say, I release this into the white light. I release this into the white light. I am now free. I am now free. Of any limiting beliefs. Of any limiting beliefs. Regarding relationships romantically. That are holding me back. That are holding me back. And so it is. And so it is. Now, Laura, would you like to float up and follow the white light to receive some healing? Or what's the last part of the session planned for today? What does your soul wish to do? Yes, healing. Okay. Float up high, please. Getting lighter and brighter. Going higher and higher. And uh, we are going up to the heavenly realms to receive some healing today. So I'd like the angel that has you at the moment to take you straight to the healing room. We're going to receive healing for stopping using emotions as coping skills. For all of the emotions that you have experienced today. So if you could let me know when you reach the healing room, please. Yes, I'm there. Perfect. And can you explain to me what it looks like or feels like? Is it a sound well, healing, water healing? It's white and there's like a slab of crystal, like a giant crystal that I'm laying on. Mm-hmm. I, I hear bells. And I'm just laying there and they're running bells around. Okay. All right, I'll be quiet for a few minutes and uh, I just want you to relax and receive the sound healing and then let me know when you are complete. Yeah. Okay. You're complete. Now, could you ask your spirit guide to let us know if there's anybody else that we need to visit or consult with today before we return to your life? It's like Archangel Raphael's working on my feet a little bit. Okay. Thank you, Archangel Raphael. And we haven't actually acknowledged any of the spirit guides who have been helping us today. So I was wondering if you could identify them so we can acknowledge and thank them. Caroline is here, that mm -hmm. angel. There's a male energy. It's actually that name Steve coming up again. He's over my left shoulder. He's just kind of guiding me, supporting me. It's just the two of them, really. Okay. While Archangel Raphael works on your feet, I'd just like to acknowledge and thank both Caroline and Steve for their presence today. Okay, he's... Like Raphael's done. Okay. And uh, anything else that we need to do in this space? <sighs> Okay, now they're finishing up. 